Okay, so um, I'll get started. My name is Neil McCullane. I'm one of the engineers uh, within Alfresco, and I'd like to talk to you briefly today about JUnit rules, okay? I'm not talking about these rules, so I'm not talking about um, Alfresco smart folders, rules and actions, and all that stuff. Um, it's different. I'm talking about these rules, JUnit rules. So these are a, a feature that the JUnit framework, the JUnit library has uh, had since about four, six, four, seven, round about there. And they're essentially an evolution of the setup and teardown methods um, that we all know. Um, of so you use them when you're writing test code, integration code, and obviously doing that right takes time and effort. And these are some of the excuses that the bad Neil says to me when I'm trying to write test code for uh, various services. Um, when, you're, when you're trying to test some code, you need to, well, when you're trying to write an integration test, you need to run that test as a user. And the admin user is always available, so it's easy to use the admin user. But the admin user has elevated privileges, so it's, it's unrealistic um, and very bad practice to do so. Likewise, if you're dealing with content that is typically going to be stored within a share site, you should really write your test to test that content in a site. But then you have to create the site, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I can't be bothered. Um, and you should, of course, tidy up after yourself. All those tests, though, that you create, you've got to tidy them up. So basically, these are just complaints. I wish I had more time. I wish I didn't have to do all this boring setup, and I wish I could just write real test code. And that's where JUnit rules come in. So JUnit rules make it easier for you to do the boring bits of integration testing. So what I'm showing you here is a test class. It's testing my service. And you can see down the bottom the normal uh, test method. It's annotated with the JUnit 4 annotation. And other than that, it's pretty normal. And it's got three fields uh, within the class. Those are annotated either as rules or class rules. Those are JUnit annotations, not Alfresco annotations. And the first one um, is of type Alfresco person. That's an Alfresco class that I wrote. And by having simply declaring that field and putting that annotation on it, an Alfresco user will be created automatically when those tests are run, given a, a kind of an automatic generated ID, and will be cleaned up afterwards. The second one, temporary nodes. This is the non-static rule. Uh, this nodes, if you, any nodes in Alfresco that your test creates, if they are registered with that object, it will delete them at the end of the test. And it doesn't matter whether they're checked out or locked or any of that stuff, it'll just work. And then the third one is the run as fully authenticated rule, which does exactly what it says. Um, it will ensure that each of your test methods are run as a particular user. And this one will run as the user that was created anonymously by the first rule, by the static uh, Alfresco person rule. So I think that's pretty easy. Um, I think JUnit rules are really, really useful. I can't believe they're not more generally, uh, generally used. They just remove lots of boilerplate from test code. Um, they're really easy to use. I think, I think you saw that. It's just a couple of fields with a couple of annotations on it, and that is it. Um, it's also not hard to create your own. So what I don't want to do is give you an impression that they are only an alternative idiom for setup and teardown, because they're absolutely not. They're far more powerful than that. So I'll finish with uh, this final example of a rule. Um, again, it's a snippet of normal Java test code. Um, you can see there's two test methods down the bottom, both annotated with the JUnit test annotation. Um, but one of them is also annotated with this load test annotation. That is an Alfresco annotation. Um, and then at the top, we've got the two fields on this test class. Uh, the first one, Alfresco people, is a bit like the Alfresco person object that we saw before. Again, this is a, a class that I wrote, so this is available within Alfresco. And that will create 32 users within the system whenever that test is run. Um, they will all be given GUID identifiers. Excuse me. Um, so that's a static rule. They will be created before the first test method and cleaned up after the last one. <coughs> then the second rule there is a load test rule. This is a non-static rule. And what this will do is it will, I'm running out of time, it will intercept the execution of all test methods, right? And in the case of the normal test method, which doesn't have the load test annotation, it will just do the normal thing. It will just call it, and it will either pass or fail. But in the load test um, annotated method, instead of just calling it, it will create 32 threads in the background. 
It will start those threads. It will authenticate as one of each of the 32 users that were created automatically by the first rule. So you've got 32 concurrent threads authenticated as different users. And then it will execute the same test method concurrently 32 times. And if they all pass, your test passes. If any of them fail, the errors are aggregated together and you see a low test failure. So uh, that's it. More info.